guys, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl X Twee Lee here. Hello, if you're new here. My name is Twee. Hi, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm bringing you guys another episode to my Back to Basics 101 series, and we're going to be discussing contouring. This is such a huge phenomenon in the last few years of the makeup realm. So I'm going to be bringing it back to basics, showing you guys all the different ways to contour, common contour mistakes and how to fix them. And I'm also going to show you guys a demo of do's and don'ts as well. So if you guys want to know everything there is to know about contouring, please keep watching. <laughs> Okay guys, so I've got on my foundation on already and we're going to be discussing all things contour. So I'm going to be talking about cream contour and also powder contour. For me personally, day to day, I only ever powder contour. I just find it's a lot quicker, it's a bit more precise, not as much faff. But for days that you really want to, you know, do the damn thing and you're taking loads of photos and you're doing maybe an Instagram video and you want the damn views, people love watching cream contour. So the main difference is between cream contouring, I find that the cream contour looks a little bit more natural. It kind of looks like it's all blended in if you do it correctly. And sometimes I find that people don't like using powders because it could look muddy. I'm going to be showing you guys a higher end version and then also a dupe for it as well that I found. So one of my favourite contouring products is from Lancome. It's actually their foundation stick. It's their Tent Idol Ultra Wear Foundation Stick. I love the Lancome one because it's super, super creamy. I love the colour of this as well. It's super, super warm. So a dupe that I found from the drugstore for the Lancome Stick Foundation is the Infallible L'Oreal Foundation Sticks. And this is in the shade called Cappuccino 210. And this is really, really nice and creamy. When I apply this on, it blends out like a dream. Obviously, these are not the exact same colour dupes but the texture of it is really really similar it blends out really really well with a sponge and I love the applicator of this one in particular because it's a lot smaller than the Lancome so the actual like circumference of it is really really nice and precise so the common mistakes of cream contouring people just kind of apply on kind of like on their forehead they kind of bring it all the way down like in tutorials they bring it down here and then they might even like put it down onto their jawline as well. And then what people do is that they'll go in with a brush and then they'll literally just kind of like go in circular motions and then just kind of like buff it into the cheek. And then on their jawline as well. This is what I see people do day in and day out. The problem with contouring this way is that I find the brush that they use is way too big. This Jaclyn Hill brush is amazing for foundation, but when it comes to blending out cream contour, you want to make sure that the cream goes on precisely in the right areas. I also find that if people bring down their contour too far down, it makes their face look really, really manly. So you want to make sure that the contour doesn't look like a sharp line. Also, the brush, because it's so big, it's bringing down the cheekbone and making your face look really long and saggy, which you don't want. You want your face to be nice and lifted and your cheekbones to be popping when you do highlight and contouring. Also, a common mistake that people are doing when they're blending in their contour is is that they're literally going back and forth like this. You want to kind of avoid that because if you blend too hard, you're literally taking away all the coverage of the foundation underneath. As you guys can see, for me doing that kind of motion, it's literally lifted away all of my foundation and now you can see all my acne scarring on my cheek. And that is like so annoying because if you work so hard to get your foundation nice and flawless and you're literally moving like this, you're gonna get your foundation underneath to move as well. Okay, so this is the do not do side. It's really, really muddy. Nothing looks nice and like sharp and contoured and clean. So on the other side, I'm still gonna be using the infallible stick. However, I do find for this tutorial, this stick is quite light and it's quite a natural kind of finish. So you might not be able to see the proper like if you guys want to see a bigger contrast, just go with a slightly darker shade than this. Okay, so when you apply on your cream contour, you want to make sure that this bit is near your hairline. That is the main bit that you want to contour. Not really like in the middle here. You want to keep this middle section always nice and light and bright. The main reason why people contour on their foreheads is especially if you have a big forehead, it will shorten your forehead. That's like a top trick that Tyra Banks talked about on America's Next Up Model. However, but if you have a really short forehead, avoid doing this step. You can't always copy other people's techniques, especially when it comes to things like nose contouring and stuff, because everyone's face structure is so different. So really, really 
really look into the mirror, see what your head shape is. Do you have a long head shape? Do you have a heart head shape? You need to like, Google all different types of head shapes and look at yourself in the mirror and be like, okay, what type of head shape am I? So because I have more of a rounded freaking face, I have to contour around here as well. So what this does is that it kind of like slims this bit down. I also find when I don't do this step, and I take photos, sometimes you can see the rim of my foundation in flash photography. So a way to avoid that is by using a cream product or a powdered bronzer and put this around your hairline and then when you take flash photography, your foundation blends really, really nicely into your hairline. And then for cream contouring, what you wanna do is you really wanna position your cream contouring very specifically and you wanna do it a little bit higher than your actual cheekbones. A lot of times people will say, suck in your cheekbone and then follow the hollows of your cheek. I used to do that as well, but I found that when I used to blend it out, it would go even lower and that would make my face look saggier and not as cute. So I do it a little bit higher than that. And you wanna stop at the corner of your eye. I know sometimes I see like Huda Beauty, they bring the contouring down so, so far and you really don't wanna do that guys because it can make you look really like sharp and really strong, you can really see that line there. You wanna make sure the darkest bit is always towards your hairline, so this is the bit that's the most pigmented. And then when you go further and further down, you do lighter kind of motions here and this bit needs to be really, really nice and blended. And then here we can add a bit more product. When I contour my actual jaw, line you want to make sure you lift up your jaw where you can actually see your bone definition and that is the bit that you follow and you put it underneath your jawline this would really really help if you have a double chin if you are wearing a turtleneck because sometimes turtlenecks they'll be hiding your damn neck and you literally look like you have one round ass face and then also if you look up you'll see this little angle here you want to pop out this angle you see that? Okay, so now I'm gonna start to blend out my contouring. So I love using a sponge. This is the Black Pro Beauty Blender sponge. So I use the bum of the Beauty Blender, this fat ass, smack that ass, smack ass, 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 ass. So you wanna bounce the Beauty Blender into your hairline. So I'm kind of doing motions like this, like, like almost like a check mark. So I'm pushing it really, really lightly into my hairline. So this bit out here is gonna be the most deepest and that's because when you go out into the sun it's always your forehead around here that gets tanned the quickest also because i have more of a rounded head shape i bring it down just a little bit past my temples here if you have a really narrow face or really long face you do not want to contour this bit at all because it'll make your face look even skinnier so if you have quite a skinny face already you're literally gonna look like a pencil which you don't want to do so avoid doing it here and just contour at the top here of your head because you want to make your head look shorter and then when it comes to contouring this bit I will take my beauty blender and I'll use it on the side like this and the smallest bit I'll put towards this bit because obviously we want this bit to be smaller and then I'll literally just bounce onto my skin and then once it's all blended out it's going to go below my cheekbone already so that's where you want it to be really nice and precise and for it to have a really nice definition where your cheekbone is. If you blend it too low, you're gonna lose the shape of that cheekbone. Below here, I just use the base of the Beauty Blender again, and then I just bounce it on, and I wanna kinda keep this edge quite harsh, but not too harsh where it literally looks like you haven't blended. And then this is also a good way to blend foundation down to your neck. Okay, so this is the don't side, and then this is the do side. So hopefully you guys can see when I'm straight on, both sides like this side I feel like I have no definition it looks quite muddy it's quite patchy and this side hopefully you guys can see it has more of like a, a sharper cheekbone appearance okay so I'm gonna quickly highlight my skin let me know if you guys want to see a proper in-depth video about highlighting I'm gonna quickly talk about two different highlighting concealers that I really like to use one is called magic away liquid concealer by Charlotte Tilbury and then also one of my all-time favorites and a really really good dupe is from Maybelline it's the instant age rewind concealer so a lot of people they just put the concealer just underneath their eyes it's exactly where their dark circle is and then afterwards they will kind of use their finger and start to blend it out this is what i see people doing on the train all the time oh my god i haven't used my fingers for so long it feels disgusting and they'll literally like smear it all over the eyelid and kind of like dab it out 
I love watching people do their makeup on the train. It's so fascinating, but quite cringy at the same time. So that's how a lot of people would do their highlighter underneath their eyes. What you want to do, or what I like to do, is I like to go right in here. This is the bit that I want to be the brightest. Right here, along the bridge of my nose. And that's where I start off my triangle. This is the bit that I want to be the brightest. On this side, you guys can see, I mainly put the brightness here. On this side, I mainly put the brightness on the inner corner. This is the bit here that I find is the nicest whenever I highlight underneath my eyes because it just brings so much lightness and it also contours your nose at the same time. It always does like reverse contouring. You guys can see I haven't even contoured my nose yet but it kind of just makes my nose look a bit more narrow. And I bring my highlighting down a lot lower than this side because I want all of this bit to be nice and bright. I even like to highlight a little bit in this section here, especially if you're Asian or if you laugh a lot, you'll find that you get kind of like uh, laugh lines. You want to make sure you kind of like highlight here as well. Just like that. And then for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to put a little bit on my chin. I love a highlighted chin, you know. And then I'm just going to use a beauty blender again. Beauty blenders are my favourite. You can even just flip the beauty blender that you had. I'm going to use a new one. This is the Swell Beauty Blender. And I'm going to really like tap in... The foundation another tip that i like to do as well is i like to leave the concealer to set for a little bit so i even use my little fan and i set the concealer a little bit before i blend it out and this will help me achieve the coverage that i want sometimes if you blend out the concealer too quick it's still too runny and then when you blend out all the coverage will be gone and then it's gonna blend out my chin a little bit and then you also want to Put a little bit on the forehead as well. I don't like a really highlighted forehead because I personally feel it makes my forehead look bigger. You can put a little bit of like a lighter concealer or whatever you have left on the sponge up there as well. Okay, so that's just a little bit of the highlight. I just underneath the eyes and hopefully you guys see this side just looks a lot more blended. It's a lot more smoother. It doesn't look as like harsh and just as blocky as this side. That's just my preference anyways. Okay, so this is the cream contouring done. I do want to talk about powder contouring because that's my personal favourite way to bronze and to contour. So for bronzing and contouring, there's loads of different brands that do powders. You can get single bronzers like this or you can also get palettes like this. This one's from NYX and super, super affordable and amazing for makeup artists. So this NYX one's a really, really good dupe for the MAC highlight and contour palette. They literally are so similar. Both of them have a yellow powder and and then they have some contouring shades in here. So you honestly don't have to spend a lot of money to get the contoured and highlight look. So I do want to say for powder contour, there's a really, really big difference between bronzing and contouring. For bronzing, it's more to add warmth to your skin. I always use a bronzer and a contour. So if you want to be extra like me, go ahead. With bronzers, they tend to be a bit warmer. Similar like this Lottie London one. This is called the Tan Time Bronzer. And this one is a little bit more redder. It's a little bit more colour, a bit more warmth. Similar like what you'd get if you left outside your house and you got a little bit burnt, you went on holiday, you had that warm kind of finish to your skin. Whereas for contouring, you want something a bit more cooler. This is Hula by Benefit. And this is a really, really good contouring shade. You guys can see a difference here. One is a bit more red and one is a bit more brown, a bit more cool toned. So you want to kind of like mix and match both of them because I wouldn't really use this for my forehead. Whereas this one I would use for my forehead. You know, I wouldn't use this to contour my nose, but I would use the benefit to contour my nose. So there's a time and place for everything, guys. So what I see a lot of people do on the don't side is that they use a really, really big brush and they'll go in with their bronzer, just like that. And then they'll kind of like dust it all over their skin and use this as almost like a powder. And they also contour on their eyes a little bit on their nose as well i don't know why people love to like just dust this all over their nose and then also bring it down to their neck like this that is what i see a lot of people do a lot of the time and oh my god i literally look like a oompa loompa right now i look so orangey and so muddy this is the way i used to see when i used to work on a makeup counter how people would actually do their makeup guys so on the do side i'm gonna set everything first with a translucent powder because i told you guys earlier you want to do powder on top of another powder so it doesn't go cakey i'm gonna go in with one of my favorite powders ever this is from Too faced and this is their primed and poreless powder so I'm just going to dust this side of my skin all over with a powder first. And you can even do baking at this point, but I won't get into baking into this video because I want it to be mainly about contouring. You want to make sure we set all of that contouring that we did. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with that Lottie London bronzer again and my Kit Stars brush. And then I'm just going to 
powder where I contoured before. So I'm almost kind of like going on top of it to reinforce that bronzer. And mainly again on my forehead. And then when it comes to my cheek, I actually want to contour this bit. I don't really add that much warmth to my cheek. So I'm going to go in with the Hoola by Benefit. And also, I feel like this brush is more better for bronzing. For contouring, I like to go with something a little bit smaller. So this brush is the Round Contour by Makeup Addiction. And then I always start on the hairline, especially with powder. You always want to start here. Because by the time you do your hair and stuff, if this bit looks really, really dark, it doesn't really matter. But if you start here and blend here, the bit where the brush goes first, that's where the most powder and most pigments going to be. So you always start at your hairline first and then work your way slowly, slowly down so that it blends all together. And you want to do it at an angled motion. So I'm kind of going upwards. I'm not going directly across like this. I'm going upwards because I want my cheeks to be nice and lifted. And then once again, I go underneath the jawline and I just reinforce that cream contouring that we did. Okay, so I'm going to quickly show you guys a nose contour, just a quick one. I'm not really going to get in depth with it. But a big problem that I find when people do nose contouring is that they'll go in with their bronzing brush, even if it's this Kit Stars one, and they'll go in with like a bit of hula maybe. And then they'll just literally brush this on the side of their nose like this, just like that. And then maybe on the tip of their nose like that. You don't want to do that, guys. That is like the opposite of what you should be doing for contour especially for your nose you want your nose to be very precise so what you guys want to do is go for an eyeshadow brush this is one of my favorite brushes for contouring it's the shader brush by dose of colors so it's a lot smaller you guys can see it's a different brush for a different area just like how we use a different brush for the bronzer we use a different brush for the contour a different brush for the nose because the nose you want it to be really really precise and I literally just take a little bit on the brush and you want to make sure you look at your nose as well and what shape do you guys want to achieve do you want to achieve a button up effect where your nose is pushed up on me personally my nose is quite short so I wouldn't suit that nose because I'll literally look like I have a piggy nose so if you have a nose that kind of like hooks down that's when you want to contour underneath here I personally don't want to contour underneath there because I hardly have any freaking cartilage there if anything I want to put more cartilage in there bitch I want to kind of elongate my nose as long as I can and then I'll just highlight just in the tip here so with the contour I want to be really precise so I just rest my finger on here and I start by the bridge of my nose here and I work up to where my eyebrow is so I want this bit to really blend in and then I'll just slowly go down whatever's left on my brush I'll just gently brush it down and I don't want nothing too harsh at all guys when people do this and I even see beauty gurus do it and I have no idea why they'll do that because it just makes everything look really really wide you want to make sure your contour is kept really really slim when you highlight you want to bring your highlight really close to your nose because if you're putting your bronzer all here it's messing up all your highlight on your nose it's going to make your nose look wider so you want to make sure this bit is nice and petite and then bring your highlighter all the way in there that's why even when i do baking i bring it all the way in and that will cut off any large bone that you guys have here if you have a big wide nose here this will be amazing to put a nice brightening effect down here and then just contour like a little slim line okay so those are the main tips for contouring i hope you guys can see a difference because i definitely can looking in the mirror i literally look like a crazy bitch right here i literally look like i haven't washed for like two weeks and it's really muddy and really patchy and this is just a bit more blended it's a bit more photogenic and it will just really exaggerate your cheekbones or even give you cheekbones that you didn't have before okay so i'm going to quickly talk about some common mistakes and also how to fix them a problem that a lot of people get with their bronzer is that their bronzer is patchy so if your bronzer is patchy that probably means that either your skin underneath is patchy and you guys need to exfoliate so skincare is so important especially when it comes to having nice foundation and a nice base make sure you're using an acid or a form of exfoliation because you don't want to be putting foundation on top of dead skin cells because you can literally see all the bumpiness and it just looks horrible underneath so it could be patchy because of your skincare you want to make sure you use a good primer a good foundation also by powdering your skin first before applying the bronzer or the contour that can also eliminate patchiness something that i found really really helpful and i learned it when i worked at mac is that if you go in with a powder foundation example this side is super super patchy right now so i'm going to show you guys how to fix it and then i'm going to go in with a brush from zoeva this is a 101 brush it's got a nice point to it i'm going to work it into that powder foundation and because this gives coverage as well it's going to erase 
a lot of the bronzer. So just say if you went a bit too heavy handed and oh my god you look like oompa loompa. You can literally go on top and just erase it and it just helps lighten it with this powder foundation. So that's a really, really good tip to help fix any problems that you guys have. Having a powder foundation in your arsenal for occasions whenever you want more coverage or you've done a lot of mistakes, you can just erase it with a powder foundation rather than taking it all off and starting again. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed another episode to this Back to Basics series. I've literally just filmed an eyeliner 101 and do's and don'ts so make sure you are subscribed and your notification bell is turned on so you can get alerted when that video is up live. I've also already filmed a foundation 101 episode already so make sure you check that out after this video if there's anything else you guys want to know about makeup and I can do a back to basics video on it comment them down below or you can also message me on any of my other social media platforms it's just x Lee on snapchat twitter instagram and facebook and I'm always checking my messages on there so I'd really really appreciate your feedback are you guys enjoying these videos and finding it helpful let me know down below so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys. The main difference between queen queen the main difference between the main difference between why can't I talk today? So this is benefit from Hula. This is benefit from Hula. This is Hula by benefit. Okay, thumbnail time bitch. It feels weird not saying bye guys, enjoy the bloopers, you know? Just in case there's no bloopers. I guess I just made a blooper, you know. <laughs>